Hello and welcome to this brief video explaining the assignment from the evidence-based medicine collection on prognosis. This is from the Department of Family Medicine at RCSI Pardana and I'm Professor Anthony Cummins. First of all, before you complete any of your assignments, you should familiarize yourself with the publication I think it's under the section on professionalism from the Irish Medical Council on guidelines for medical schools on ethical standards and behavior appropriate for medical students. It states explicitly here that you should adhere to the rules and regulations, policies and procedures governing plagiarism and falsification of data in any academic and clinical activities. Copying and pasting is considered plagiarism and it will result in zero marks for that assignment. It may also, as it now leaves you with an incomplete portfolio of assignments, may make you ineligible to sit the end of year assessments. Please do not do this. In completing this template, you first of all give brief anonymized details of the case you saw in your GP practice or in Clinica Sahatan, which involved a clinical dilemma or learning need related to prognosis. Do not include any patient identifiers, any identifiers. Simply describe the patient in terms of age and gender. For example, a 52-year-old man, a 78-year-old woman, a 10-year-old boy or a 5-year-old girl. Do not use initials or made-up words and names like Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse. Just give age and gender only. You next formulate your question in this PRO style as shown here. And this is indicating the population, the risk and the outcome. And then you clarify the clinical question, which you should write in a sentence here in this section. Clarity is everything here. Please keep it simple and make sure that your question is quite specific so that you're looking for one particular risk and one particular outcome. You may then search through the following sources in order to find information about this topic. The ones we commonly use are up to date, a Dynamed, as well as the Cochrane database of systematic reviews of PubMed searching, and you may also check on guidelines, for example, the NICE guidelines. And these are usually culled from these various sources just mentioned. From these papers that you see on the searches, you should then choose one study appropriate to your question. Now, you should make it crystal clear why you choose this study. So don't, for example, have a cert that shows 60,000 studies and then you suddenly picked inexplicably paper number 25. Explain why you've done that. You then write in the title, the correct title of the paper, the correct lead author's name, the journal title, and you put a PDF of the paper. If you've done this through EC Proxy, it should be easily accessible by the examiner, namely me. However, in the past, several students linked through EC Proxy have been impossible to reload and access, and I've had to go and find another way to come to get the full text of the paper. Remember, lazy scholar here, that if you don't have full text, you may be able to get it, so make sure you have that on your browser bar. You then begin your critical appraisal of the study. First of all, you want to look at validity. Are the results of this study valid? And you break down validity into different components. So initially, was a representative sample of patients recruited at an early point in the course of their disease? This is either yes or no. You can see that from the methods and results section, and maybe even in the abstract of the paper. And make your comments here. If, if the sample you feel was not representative, it's very important that you make that clear in your comment. What were the outcome criteria? And what were the outcomes objective? So please comment on that also. It's important to look at follow-up because 
loss to follow-up can seriously prejudice the validity of a study. So it's important that they establish that the patients were followed up and they were followed up completely. And those who were lost to follow-up should have an explanation in the paper as to why they were lost to follow-up. Clearly, it's very important to comment if important prognostic factors have not been considered as this is a paper on prognosis and these should clearly be a central part of the paper. Was the data collected prospectively? Uh, and the similar question, was the design of the study prospective? Now clearly, you may come across a paper that is a retrospective cohort, and that's quite acceptable, but in this particular case, it will not be a prospectively designed study. You then look at the results of the study, they should be quite easily visible in the results section of the paper. You should be able to explain in your own words the results of the study. How likely is the outcome event over a particular period of time, whatever period they chose, five years, ten years, etc. Did they provide confidence intervals? If so, what were they? You need to comment on this because this gives you a judgment as to the precision of the results and therefore potentially the value of this paper. And finally, we look at applicability. Are these results applicable to my patient or is my patient so different to these patients in this cohort study that they are not applicable? And would they be useful for counselling, advising or reassuring your patient? You then write, in your own words, your conclusions about this paper in terms of its validity, its results and applicability. This is a summary section at the end of your template and then your final conclusion about whether this was a good or bad paper, a useful paper or not, and if you could use this in your clinical practice. Thank you.